Okay, um, we'll get started. Okay, I just want to read from John chapter 20, and um, this is verses maybe 24 onwards. Okay, let me just read John 20, 24. Now, Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, um, Reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not yet not seen and yet have believed. And uh, verse 30 and verses 30 and 31, it says, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Okay, so we've uh, maybe read this many times, and where Thomas, being the very rational, you know, maybe even scientific kind of a person, he wants proof, right? And the Lord Jesus gives him proof um, after a while, you know. It's so, and the very exact words that he actually tells the disciples, the Lord Jesus brings back, you know, or, or uh, tells him, and he says, you know, why don't you do this? Um, put your finger here and then touch and see that I am alive. And then he says, Thomas, you have seen me and you have believed. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Uh, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Right? And um, so, you know, the, the question for us is again that, you know, what are some aspects? Maybe we believe that Jesus is Lord, but what are some aspects of you know, uh, of the Christian walk, or maybe what the Lord has promised, or something that, um, that we see in the Word that we find it difficult to believe, challenging to believe, and we're saying, "Lord, I want proof. I want more proof." And the Lord is willing to give proof. Right? The Lord, it's not like the Lord will not, but uh, the Lord will give proof. But He also brings us to a place where He's saying, "You know, blessed are those who have not seen yet believe." And of course, the context is believing in the person of the Lord Jesus. Okay, and and that's the first step. You know, many times we do not know or we, we may not be able to understand the outworking of certain things, right? What, how. But we can always believe on the who, which is the person of the Lord Jesus. Okay, when we believe and we have faith in who he is, we can always, you know, from that will overflow into the outworking of what and how and when and all that, right? But uh, our faith needs to be really strong in who he is. We need to be able to trust him, right? And the Lord says that these things are written that you may believe. These things are written that you may believe. The word of God is filled with, you know, about his character, about the personhood, and these things are written that we may believe. So which means that whenever there there is... Um, shaking of faith uh, because of maybe some things that we are facing. Maybe there's a mountain, maybe there's some trials, maybe there's some challenges. You know, something's happening in our lives. right? And uh, that, that was the case with Thomas. You know, suddenly Jesus was there, now he's not there, and suddenly people are saying he's there again. And So his, his belief, everything was shaken. right? And that could happen to our lives. Right? Everything becomes, at one point it's like, oh, this is, this is nothing can shake me. Right? I'm there at the top of the mountain. Nothing can shake me. This is, is the best. But then the next morning we wake up with all these fierce questions and saying, oh God, you know, are you there? So the Lord is pointing us back to the word saying, these are written that you may believe. And that you may believe in the person. And out of that, when, we, when our faith is strong in the person of who he is, then what he does, when he will do, how he will do it, everything will fall in place. Right? So let's just pray and uh, say, Lord, take us back to the word. <clears throat> Father, we, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for 
God, for these words that we just read, Lord, that um, Lord, in times when our faith is shaken, when we have questions, God, um, Lord, things that really seem to bring in a lot of unbelief and bring in a lot of, maybe because of hurt, maybe because of discouragement, or maybe the difficulties, God, of life. But Lord, we, we thank you for these reassuring words that, uh, Lord, you said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe, God. And Lord, I pray that um, and that's, there's only one thing that brings us to that place, which is um, your word. And Lord, we pray that even as you, Lord, point us back to your word, that these things are written, that we may believe that you are the Lord, that you are the Christ. And Lord, I pray that um, we will always come back to that place. And when we are strong in that, Lord, all other things, what you will do, when you will do it, and how you will do it in our lives, God, will fall in place. And so, God, we thank you. Um, we pray that we'll be strong, rooted in your word, and led by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So last class was interesting. We did <laughs> we took a detour. <laughs> we took a detour, only two points, I think, and then we got stuck. So we shall uh, step on the accelerator and uh, you know go through the other things which are you know like basic and foundational. But I hope that what we discussed yesterday <clears throat> they kind of made sense and uh, settled some things like in our heart. Um, we can go back to it uh, again, no problem. Okay, so um, let me just share the screen. Right. <clears throat> so um, we are. Uh, we looked at okay, what qualifies us, right? <clears throat> because the call of God is something. What qualifies us as the basic thing? We are believers. What qualifies us to actually communicate or preach right? that we are the fact that we are believers, the fact that we are spirit filled and spirit taught, basically spirit led. Okay, and um, of course, called, commissioned. And uh, that will always uh, give us that reassurance. Hey, you know, I'm on this assignment because I'm called by God. You know, I'm on this ta task or you know, place, this place. I'm doing this because I'm called by God. Because there could be a lot of things that could discourage, a lot of things that we could face, difficulties, which make us question the call. You know, uh, in fact, the call could be so strong, and we we obey, and then we get into that environment where we are called. And then we begin to ask, it's because it's so tough, it's so difficult, the response is not great, and then we begin to doubt, you know, am I really called for that, right? And the fact is that the, we are, the fact that we are called and the, and the, you know, the proofs that we are called uh, or the reassurance that we are called and commissioned will always enable us to go forward, right? So this is another qualification. <clears throat> the fourth one, there are, things, there are certain things that are common, so I've just kind of highlighted that. Um, the another uh, theologian also talks about the same qualifications. The uh, fourth one is, of course, character, okay, which Paul writes about in all the, uh, I mean, what we saw yesterday in First Timothy, Titus, right? He says, okay, this is what is required, character is required. Okay, um, gifting will definitely open the doors, this gifting will take us to places where we never thought was possible. And it, gifting is also from God, right? Gifting is from God. So there's no need to, you know, look down or say gifting is not bad, not good. No, Paul asks us to pursue gifts, to pursue spiritual gifts, anointing, everything. So, but what will give us endurance? Well, I think right from the first semester we've been learning that, right? Uh, we've been reiterating that. What will give us endurance? What will give us longevity in the ministry? What will give us the uh, credibility? Right? Um, what will actually uh, bring glory to God is our character. And what will cause us to really hold all the gifting is character. Okay, So um, many times people can be swayed, uh, saying, OK, uh, this gifting is enough. But then if there are cracks in the character, it will break. Right? It will come to a point where we, you know, where we will implode, or in a sense, whatever God has put, you know, it just breaks because we're not able to sustain that. Okay, so uh, character. And um, and of course, being a person of prayer. Okay, being a person of prayer. Um, you know, prayer not just for the assignment. Prayer not just for the, you know, the next message. Prayer not, not just for the next, 
you know whatever we are going to minister in this which is important of course but prayer as a lifestyle right we've been studying about prayer prayer as intimacy with god prayer as uh, our relationship uh, as a conversation and in our relationship with god so um so you know many times we are we even teach our children you know it, you know maybe maybe bedtime maybe you know at uh, at the time of uh, uh, maybe just before having a meal so people just have the thing okay maybe this is about it's about this right before eating before going to bed before stepping out it's all you know kind of event based prayer but somehow we need to break that and say you know you can pray i, I don't i don't think um, i don't i don't think my parents ever said that uh, you know you can just talk to god anytime they never said that you no know, did you pray before <laughs> eating did you pray before you know going to bed <clears throat> you know that was the thing but i think we need to for us we need to tell ourselves that we can pray at any time we can talk to the lord any time practice that and for the next generation also you know, to say that you know just talk be authentic be real any time right um okay as a student of the word okay now this is a this is a given okay so um all of us read but do we all study okay that's the difference okay all of us read the word <laughs> you know we read it we like it we read one verse and we are like ah <laughs> you know god you really spoke to me we close it we go <laughs> but the question is uh, um, do we study the word you know that's uh, what is the difference reading and studying Mm. Mm -hmm. going deep huh diamonds and pearls huh? <clears throat> diving deep taking the pearls digging deep taking the diamond okay yeah so yeah <clears throat> mm. I mean, it comes to uh, un, um, when it comes to just regularly and just reading through it. But when it comes to more than that, you're trying to understand what the verse means, and you're seeing if this verse can connect another verse, and if it does so, why? So these type of questions that pop up when you're uh, when you're trying to further study on that, you're trying to understand like why this word was said here. What is what? What did Jesus say by saying this? Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to get the context of it. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe you do a word study. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So the thing is. <clears throat> um you know it can happen to us that uh, maybe as students we are you know we are getting into all that we are doing that maybe we are forced to do that whatever so we do that okay but um <clears throat> let's say we get into uh, we start I mean, let's just, just proceed on maybe some of us are going to be working professionally maybe we are ministering uh, whatever you know whatever environment we are so the the issue the question is you no know, do we continue to do that do we continue to be students of the word uh, because it's important because uh, uh, revelation comes it's not that revelation won't come god will not give but we have been given this precious word of god that we might go deeper and I'm always reminded of mark 4 where after the parable the lord says um, you know uh, Uh, I'll, let's probably look at that verse. <clears throat> It talks about the measure, right? With the measure with which one uses, yeah, twenty-four, um, I think, no. Mark four, twenty-four, twenty-five. So, yeah. So the It talks about effort. It talks about hunger. It talks about pursuing. You know all that, right? So, um, so let's never stop doing that. Okay. okay so to be a student of the word and as a person using the gifts of the spirit right spiritual gifts of the spirit are for the believer and uh, well paul is continually is exhorting the church you know 1 corinthians 14 and um, he's saying verse one desire uh, and the objective of desiring the gifts is so that we may walk in them right so, so that we may uh, be a vessel for god to express himself that that will be a vessel right 
Okay, the second one also, uh, if you if you look into the notes, it's all similar similar things, um, but also talks about loving the Lord and loving people. Okay, loving the Lord and loving people. You know, now we might say, you know, uh, that's you know, is it possible to actually share the word or minister without loving God and loving people? Yeah, what do you think? Huh? That much effect. <laughs> yeah, you're right. In the sense, in the sense, you won't be content. First of all, right? You, there's, there's no sense of fulfillment, contentment. It is possible to do it mechanically. It is possible to uh, do it as a sense of duty. And <clears throat> and um, yeah, since we're talking about preaching, since we're talking about you know maybe uh, looking at it as pulpit ministry, it is possible. It is possible to come down to that place, um, and there are sadly, you know, in churches in Christianity, you know, we see around uh, that kind of a thing. Right? You see that uh, people are there; they are ministers of God, and uh, it's it's there's no it's a sense of you know maybe I need to do this work, I need to, and and then <clears throat> people just say something. You know, it, it's about 15, 20 minutes. They say something, say something from the newspaper, say something from the reader's day, something. And uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, people are also coming with expectation. They go back disappointed. And uh, there's a lot of things happen. Okay. Um, so it's it's a very sad state, you know, to see such things. But unfortunately, it happens, right? So um, must love the Lord, must love souls. You know, now, loving other people, and to be to have a heart uh, really engaged in that now it's a difficult thing okay why is it difficult because when you're when when you're hurt when you're uh, discouraged when people say things <clears throat> our natural tendency is to protect right i'm going to build a wall no more people <laughs> just me and god okay love i love god you know god doesn't change thank god <clears throat> he doesn't, you know, he convicts, but he doesn't put me down, condemn but people. But the fact is that uh, ministry exists because of people. Like people need to be reached. People need to be, you know, built and so on. So, so the same, you know, the same hurt that we experience, or the same strategy that we use to, you know, block off that hurt, actually blocks us off from loving people again. Right, just think about it. So, which means that, um, yeah, people say, you know, you need to have tender hearts and thick skin when it comes to ministry, when it comes to, you know, tender hearts and thick skin. You know, people might say things, but the thing is to for us to get healed and get going, right? Get healed and get going. Yes, there will be disappointments, get healed and get going, because if not, we will be. You know, in a place we could be ministering, but it could be me happening mechanically. It will. We will not have the joy of the Lord. Okay. See, in the Bible, there's there's one person who does things mechanically. He's saying, "Okay, God, you know, I don't know. Ask me to do. I'm doing." But he doesn't really have the love for people. You know, any any person that you can think of. Yeah, because Jonah's there. <laughs> he's actually he's not even waiting for. You know, the, he's shared, he's preached the message, you know, repent, you know, uh, three days and that's it, the judgment of God. And then uh, he doesn't, um, he doesn't want to see people's hearts changed. He goes to a vantage point, nice place of view. Okay, now I'm going to watch. Huh? Yeah, he wants to see the fireworks. He's saying, okay, I want to see now how God destroys these people. Okay, I've done my job. And I come back, and then he's very disappointed. Lord, I know, I knew you will do that. <laughs> I knew you will change your heart, and I knew that you're a you know loving God and all that. That's why I didn't want to come. You kill me now, <laughs> right? So, so we see that his heart was actually so disengaged from even the message that he preached. So it's possible. It's possible for us as modern day, you know. Ministers have got to reach that place, maybe because of her. And the thing is this: that the uh, he goes to Nineveh, and uh, 
like if you read history you see that these were people who actually raided these were people who came and attacked his own yeah so he has that grudge against them he has that hurt against you know in his heart so he doesn't uh, he doesn't doesn't really want them to you know repent right yeah i've seen some of the preachers who who have a very worldly life but they, when this come to sunday they'll do all the rituals they'll do they lead the worship messages and all but uh, can we think like this like he is not the person who is actually uh, doing that but holy spirit will work but i've seen i've seen uh, some of the pastors they're doing so many great things but when they when they go off from the stage they'll be living a worldly life only so what's your so the thing is god works dis- despite the vessel and uh, like all of us as well you know included so despite the vessel the grace of god despite the person you know god ministers and blesses and so on so so that's you know that's given you know in the, in the sense that happens but how long <clears throat> and at what cost you know that's the thing at what cost because uh, um, so when a when a person let's say, let's say i mean see again when we say worldly life we are it's our observation um and we are saying okay but maybe there are certain things that are you know like willful sin or you know the kind of lifestyle the kind of things that they speak etc we observed and then we are like you know how is god continuing to use them so the lord blesses the gifts and the calling of god are irrevocable we see that in romans and so god does that um but again for how long at what cost we won't know right and we see church history and we see even re- recent um happenings and we see that there is you know it, it, it that's um that kind of a lifestyle is positioning one for oneself for a fall you know and uh, so we we don't know you know what kind of and the, and the kind of example that we are sitting people are people are clever people watch people see that okay and the thing is uh, the next generation you know that sees and then they see the outward things and they say yeah, i've got a call of god and i i should be like this so wrong role model so an entire generation comes up you know going after external things um why why do you want you know they're saying you know i want god to use me why i want to preach to thousands i want to preach to this thing i want to be you know i want to go from one uh, i want to go on this flight and that flight these are people saying young young people saying that this is the thing you know i want to i want to drive like this i want to so um the role you know we are setting um uh, uh, we are being wrong role models so it has repercussions right so yeah that's the thing but you know yeah, yeah uh, like god god does work god does bless because he knows these eyes people he knows the hearts of people god does work but that's that's why you know we can never say okay because people lives are transformed okay it's uh, something to do with the minister you know we can never authenticate and say okay it's because of the effectiveness of this person we can say that god we can't say that because god works despite you know who we are and uh, we see them by the you know them by the <clears throat> yeah by the fruit by the fruit yeah. so does the transformation of the people's mm. lives considered as fruit yeah so that that that, that were said sorry that verse the lord says about um, about the false prophets and he said you will know them by their fruit in the sense uh, the fruit of what they do the fruit of uh, the eventual you know, outcome of their lives so it's about that <clears throat> that doesn't apply here not fully yeah so we can't you know say oh, <clears throat> excuse me so we can't say okay this person is being blessed so therefore you know that kind of puts a stamp of approval on everything that the minister does you know so i have a small question on yeah. um, this 
must be clean in life i don't know if we came to that okay, that's the next thing yeah next mm. okay you maybe i'll ask after oh, we can, i can ask yeah yeah so when we say must be clean in life um, so and also we it comes about the character that we are talking definitely yeah. um so for example a preacher or somebody who is struggling with their own things i'm not saying which are genuinely they are struggling for example they are struggling with something uh, a sexual sin maybe and uh, but they are coming out mm -hmm. on the pulpit and they are preaching about the same thing mm -hmm. they are not able to get out of it or it might be genuine also uh, we don't mm -hmm. know so i'm i'm trying to understand if you are saying being clean um my basic understanding is being according to the word of god and being clean in the eyes of god yeah. whatever our concerns or yeah. something like that so but throughout this process we do go through a lot of things that mm. you know might not be very clean uh, you know maybe at that point uh, mm. we mm. are struggling for a long time yeah. and uh, but still we need to push through it and come and you know uh, you know do do our job Mm. fulfill our responsibility yeah. that god has given the same responsibility mm. that god has given to us mm. so how do we as ministers or uh, in this process of this how do we keep us clean yeah and when this obstacles are coming in how do we uh, you know what what would be the ideal scenario that we could do i mean practically possible yeah thing. yeah yeah so um, so when we you know consider all this um, you know when we look at um, uh, being a student of the word uh, and especially about uh, character etc we know that we are works in progress okay all of us um, we are all works in progress in the sense we are mature to a certain extent we are living a consecrated life to a certain extent and there's always more there's, it's always a progressive thing okay now uh, when we say okay i need to be clean in life i need to be consecrated living a sanctified life yeah there could be certain things that i'm struggling with okay so uh, so the question is this you know first thing is am i willfully you know is it a struggle is it a struggle or is it a surrender right in the sense i'm not fighting against sin you know i'm not fighting against you know this anger issue or you know this bitterness issue and i'm just giving in letting go surrender you know or this addiction whatever i'm just letting go um and uh, you know i'm just trying to put on a another mask when it comes to ministry just putting on a mask saying and i might preach against the same thing you know i you need to be clean right <laughs> that's one thing the second scenario is i'm genuinely fighting uh putting up a fight saying god you know i'm working with this i'm working against it now the thing is this uh, can such a person go and minister okay if they are struggling see having serious struggle okay having serious struggle with addiction having serious struggle with you know whatever issues well the thing is the right thing to do is to put a pause get help right now it could be a it could be a longer process for some it could be a long process put a pause say okay god you know i i need to this is this is interfering this is hindering uh it's not right my heart is not get help because most of the time we don't want to share because we don't want to try. we don't we, we feel ashamed yeah we feel ashamed like what will that person think um it doesn't have to be with you know all and sundry but it can be with someone whom you look up to maybe a someone who's a experienced senior person uh, whom you respect uh, saying and then share and so it can be with confidence it can be uh, you know so the person can hold that in confidence and then also work maybe it's you know it happens like right? people are having a you know whatever challenges so to put a pause and say you know maybe a couple of months i don't want to do this i don't want to share i don't want to minister i'm not going to be traveling ministering now you need to have the boldness and the courage to do that so that sometimes doesn't happen unfortunately saying okay i'm the only person i'm the usher i'm the sound guy i'm the <laughs> i'm the preacher i'm the one who closes the you know what do i do yeah it's a it's a very challenging thing so so in such cases you just need to yeah you just need to very militantly deal with things 
deal with it and say god it needs to be dealt with i'm not going to um to say and then the lord gives grace the lord gives grace the lord gives grace the lord gives uh, you know when you when you reach out man the lord mm-hmm. cleans up uh, but again it depends on our availability our cooperation it's never forced down on us no? so yeah so that's the thing it's a progressive thing it's uh, yeah, when you, when we talk about thing but there are certain things is really you know, you know it's a it's a willful thing it's a we need to deal with it yeah Uh, having an anger issue okay uh like it's regarding to the situations that were around him and he was constantly trying fighting like okay not to burst out not to burst out but the situations around were making more and what like he just bursted out and like Hmm. he was trying so hard not to burst or not to you know throw the chairs off hmm. <laughs> so i think it's a real life example <laughs> i'm getting more and more uh, witness in my heart it's a real life example okay so so yeah so so, so you did that so the thing is uh, you know it's, it's so that's that's a that's a classic case of wanting to deal with it uh, deal with the anger issue uh, and Mm-hmm. so yeah yeah so the, so to find out okay how is it how do i deal with it so really to get help okay and some wisdom how do i deal with it do i stuff it in okay like at the marriage course uh, conference that we you know attended recently so they were talking about two kinds of people like two kinds of people who respond to anger one is like a rhino okay is respond to you know angry situation one is like a rhino rhino meaning rhino will just charge just charge no matter what is there it could be a tank and it just hits it and it's, it's got so much strength just keeps running eating so that's a rhino the other one is a hedgehog hedgehog is like a porcupine porcupine what it does is when when there is danger when it just goes in goes within passive what i you know is everything okay hmm <laughs> <laughs> but inside the temperature is increasing you know it's boiling boiling so and one day it will be something very simple something very very uh, ordinary but then the whole thing bursts right so so two kinds of things so both are wrong you know both are not the ideal way to handle uh, thing so the thing is uh, to find out okay how do i handle it okay how do i handle it is to you know to get the right tools okay to keep short accounts you know people say you know people you keep short accounts in the sense that day that day's thing you deal with it you settle it sort it take it before the lord sort it out right and and release that release that hurt and have a conversation if possible if, if you know whoever caused that provocation is there right there have a conversation and deal with it and rather than saying you know you always make me do this say okay i always feel you know use those i statements i feel upset when these things happen i feel up and so those are some ways to deal with it so not to build up but to uh, think so so in that case uh, how do i handle it okay if it's become a very recurrent thing every day okay so so the thing is that uh, maybe an attempt has been made in this case you know it's not a willful it's not like i you know i, I need to do that you're not going around angry you know waiting to pick up a fight it's not that so that would be a willful thing you know i am an angry young man i'm just you know ready to you know um, so uh, it's not a willful thing but your will is involved so when we say willful we're talking about okay you've just given in you know over to it like some people come to that thing conclusion they hey, this is not working out so let me just leave it you know just it's it's a it's a question of giving up of hope altogether and therefore completely getting into you know whatever that sin uh, sinful activity sinful thought pattern whatever you know you get into it because you've given up hope given up any hope of uh, you know recovery kind of thing so that would be a willful thing but if there is a you know like the scripture talks about well the spirit 
uh, fights against the, the flesh against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. So there is that tension, there is that thing, there is that conviction. As long as that is kept tender, our heart is kept tender, our consciousness are not seared, then there is always hope for change. Right? Yeah. So, um, so if it becomes a problem, even if it becomes an issue, then then I think you just need to you know, take some time off and say, okay, I need maybe it's a maybe it's a role, it's a responsibility, whatever, and say I, I need to take some time off. I just want to, but yeah, and deal with it and then come back. Come back stronger, fresher. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, online uh, students, any questions or any thoughts that you might have? Uh, please free, feel free to share as well. Right? Yeah, one more question here. Yeah. So I was just thinking on these lines. Um... For example, um, a person who is very clean on conscience on whatever they're doing and stuff. But when you look at their personal life, uh, you don't see much success. Mm. For example, they are like living in so much of poverty. Mm. You know, there is not much success in their the things they do personally. You know, maybe in ministry, they are like, you know, flourishing and people okay. are... Uh, seeing the power of God and all of that, but in their personal lives, they are not able to see. Uh, you know, they live in poverty, but mm. they have to preach. Mm. Uh, you know, opposite to that, but they don't see the thing that they are seeing for others in their lives. Oh, I see. Mm. So, in that scenario, is what I mean. Um, what do we like? How do we take that? Is it like mm. uh, I'm again coming to that fruit? part of it not mm -hmm. in that context not in the context of a false prophet okay. but uh, we also need to see right uh, how do we look at that person okay in their personal life only they are not able to see you know mm. breakthroughs and stuff what okay. is happening okay but uh, uh -huh. you know they come so, uh, how do we so you're saying they are they're flourishing in ministry you said so how is that uh in what way? Like you're saying they're... I mean, flourishing in the sense they're ministering and, uh, you know, as you said, uh, uh, you know, God works despite of anything, doesn't, you know, uh, God works through him, to that particular person. Okay, God works but through that person. When you, but when you see there is like, oh, there is no fruit in their own personal life. I mean, mm. there's no uh, success in their own personal mm. life. So the thing is, um, so when we say personal life, okay, let's say this... I'm only uh, talking about uh, only in the context of not financial uh, in any personal life breakthroughs that maybe financial we'll say because just to be very specific. Okay, we'll maybe financial, financial, maybe uh, yeah. So the the question to ask is: Is the person pursuing it really? You know, uh, is the person pursuing it? Is the person uh, working towards it? Okay, because um, so the Lord uh, the Lord gives gives us strategies. The Lord gives us ideas. Um, uh, in in order, he leads. He's the Lord of breakthrough. He leads us. So you know, I could be like red hot on fire for God in certain areas, and uh, maybe I could think that these are not things worth pursuing. Maybe, or maybe think I'm not qualified enough. There could be a number of reasons, you know, or it could be a choice that I make, saying that this is how I want to live. Right. There's no drive for um, like a better life in the worldly sense. You know, maybe you know I'm satisfied with this. Like like some people we see, you know, like uh, I think uh, I'm satisfied with three shirts and two two jeans. I say one jean one week. <laughs> you know, I'm let's say satisfied with that. So those kind of things. But if the person is Trying and not succeeding, then that's a that's a issue. So that's the question. You know, is the person trying genuinely trying? Hey, I want to come up. I want to you know get out of this kind of a situation, but I'm not able to. Is that the situation? Yeah, maybe we'll say that. That is the situation. Hmm. Not 
he chose to live like this uh, i don't know it makes sense or not i take this example for the pastor ashish so um, when we when i personally see <clears throat> the church congregation will come in bench guards and audi guards and uh, pastor will come in normal guys. so he chose that life it's it's all his i mean his uh, his wish he chose that life maybe it's i mean uh, it's this uh, personal fruitfulness is not only about the finances and things maybe they are very happy joyful in their life being like that true it's a, it's a personal decision saying that okay i'm this is how i'm going to live you know i will yeah so but i think what um, yeah that's what i th- i think uh, but yeah so ravi ravi's thing is okay this is what they're trying to do and they're not succeeding i really don't know maybe uh, maybe uh, they are trying wrong you know it could be maybe from a place of uh, yeah i think you should answer <laughs> you see you studied enough <laughs> so you should answer yeah so the thing is yeah so um it could be uh, it could be uh, it's, it's difficult to really pinpoint and say okay this is it but it could be several things maybe the person is not pursuing but like you saying you know the person is trying genuinely trying so um so in which case you know maybe if it's a career or you know some things like that okay so have they you know some practical things i'm just thinking of my head some things like have they upgraded their skill level you know as in order to position themselves for a next level uh maybe for promotion etc are they being excellent in their work or you know there are so many factors right what what is their attitude for example i'll tell you you know um when i was i was not in full time ministry but i was just you know just considering and i was working but my attitude towards work was very bad very bad you know i'll, I'll give my everything for uh, ministering on in church on sunday right it was very tough it was very tough because i used to travel during the week um monday night i would travel come back thursday or friday and then there would be worship team practice whatever yeah, and then you know and then we we had our daughter who was small that time so whole sunday would be we, we'll spend in church you know and then monday night i'll have to travel again right so it was that kind of thing but my attitude towards work i would say very very confidently it was bad i was just living for the weekend who gave me that job it was god i have to be faithful there i have to be excellent there but i was not despite that god somehow by his grace enabled me to you know achieve my targets and everything month after month etc but i could have done so much more if i had this understanding that hey, this was a mission field right i had to and i have to show by example i have to be excellent in my work to do a good days work i would go late to, to uh, office not one day have i gone early <laughs> seriously <laughs> so every office started by 9 i'll be there 9:15 just run in 9:30 so my on you know my boss gave me a farewell party when i left so everybody sitting around so he said this he said you know they used to call me jk he said for jk i tried threatening him i tried all methods but i could never make him come to office on time but he said something he said this place where he is going since he is passionate about what he wants to do you know maybe he'll go there at 8 o'clock and not 9 you know it's like a prophetic thing the service starts at 8 no south <laughs> so um yeah so so it could be many things so unless we find out okay what is it there will be a reason there will be a reason maybe there are some things that need to change maybe there's a season that they're going through and they are maybe it's a season they were they continuing to you know continuing to do continuing to sow and they will see the fruit of it it could be many things so yeah okay yeah god's timing and season but god um, see what is the season it's a season of sowing it's a season of where god is building strength what is it yeah yeah 
yeah, yeah, yeah. What what does it depend on, really? You know, that's the thing, no? Hmm. Can you use the mic? Yeah. So if I'm, yeah. Maybe I have to wait for God's timing, or else like that. Yeah. So so when we look at it in the natural, like uh, work-wise, you know, you're talking about work-wise. No, work-wise, there could be reasons like this. Uh, you know, in the natural, you know, am I putting in effort? Is my effort good? Is my effort excellent? Am I really engaged in what I'm doing? Um, so we'll check all that before blaming it on God. <laughs> you know, this is God's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. No, you don't, you don't, don't come to that conclusion so soon. You know, there could be other reasons. We check that. Because God really wants to wants us to do well. Do you will you want your son or daughter to just be in one season of you know, no, you of course you want them to learn the lessons, of course, but then you want to engage with them and then take them through, right? That's that'll be your heart. So how much more our Heavenly Father? Okay. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> Maybe we should just skip this uh, thing and get get into preaching. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's good. So, um, so the thing is, what qualifies us? You know, all these uh, factors, and um, and um, like to say, a person of, you know, uh, just just to sum up, you know, in these five essential requirements, to be a person after God's own heart, to be a person of the word, character, prayer, and ability as well, right? So um, to take that up seriously, uh, so that God can really uh, use us, and uh, because He really wants to do that, wants us to be spokespersons, ambassadors of His kingdom. That's God's desire, right? So, yeah, so that we would align ourselves, that we would build ourselves in all these areas, right, for His glory. Okay. So next chapter is about the ministry of the Word. Okay, so what are we preaching? The content of what we are communicating. Okay, so that's that's really important, and why it's important. Um, we'll come to that, right? Okay, so we'll stop here, right? Okay. Uh, online students, any um, any questions? Um, I know you've been a little quiet. Any questions or anything that you might want to? Okay, I see one thumbs up. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll stop here and then we'll pick it up next week. God bless. Bye bye.